All right, y'all, what's up? We are here for the challenge. The challenge season three, All Stars. Season uh, three, episode one and two, the premiere was a double episode premiere. So that's why this is late. <laughs> it's late because during that same day, I had the two championship, well, not championship, but two big games to watch with uh, the Bucks and the Warriors and the Grizzlies and Boston Celtics. So I was watching that as well as um, watching Survivor. Dre got sent home. That was my pick. If you don't know, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll know. But if you don't, you you would know there. But she got, so I just had a lot of stuff going on. So I wanted to watch, I wanted to do like a watch with me, like I used to do with the old, uh, with the season two. But um, I just didn't, I just didn't feel like doing it for some reason. But I'm here. So right now, um, in terms of getting these out over the next two, three weeks, because these games are still on, I don't know exactly a set date on when they'll be out. Y'all know I like to just record them and get them out that same night, but I don't know if it's going to happen. But just be on the lookout. I'm trying to shoot for like Saturday at the latest to get these out. Um, but yeah, enough of that. We're about to go ahead and get started. Um, before we do that, go ahead and thumbs up the video. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking about the first two episodes, who you're rooting for. Subscribe if you have not already, because you got more of these coming. And um, share. Yeah. So let's go. Episode one is, first of all, just where they are. I can't remember exactly where they are, but I know it's the same place Nia was in for her last challenge, which is why it's so crazy that she's back, going back to the same place where she last competed. So um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love the way the show is being shot. You can tell the budget is, the budget's up there and it looks so much more produced and some, well, not produced. Yeah, produced. I wouldn't say produced in terms of the, the characters on the show. They're more real than the ones on the main show. But in terms of the quality of the show, the way it's been put together, it looks so nice. Like, it looks really nice. Everybody looks good. The house is beautiful. Like, beautiful. That house is huge. Like, I, we haven't seen a good house like that in the challenge in decades, probably. We ain't seen a good house like that since probably, shit, maybe X is 2, maybe X is 3. So, at Rivals 3, maybe? Was there X's 3? I don't think there was an X's 3. So, Rivals 3. It's been a minute since I've seen a house that looked that nice. But, um, the first two that we meet is Veronica and Tina. Veronica and Tina were a part of a trio group that Rachel's not, she's not here, but it was them two, if you, or them three, if you remember. Rachel, Tina, and Veronica were, like, looked at as, like, the mean girls back in the day. Very entertaining trio, but we got Veronica and Tina, which were the two most entertaining of the three so i'm excited to see them back they both get out the car they both look good veronica's excited to be back she's the only three-time champion for the females on this cast um this season so she's excited to just add some more respect to her name and tina's just excited to be back um which is so crazy because i didn't think we see tina multiple times so i'm glad that she's back again because tina's entertaining as fuck like no matter what she does she's gonna always entertain us um but yeah, like I said, I love the way it's filmed, the way it's shot, like everybody getting out. It kind of looks like a movie in a way. It's like the way they're filming certain things. It's just the way the camera is, I guess, maybe. But just the way they're filming it, it just makes it look so nice. The soundtrack is always bumping. Like they always got the old school hits, the good music. Like it's just, it's taking you back to old school challenge vibes. Next was Mark to walk in. Mark is like, he's the reason this is happening. He's the reason the show is what it is now like when i say the show is what it is i'm talking about all stars he's the one that spearheaded this he's the one that got it green lit and i'm grateful for you mark as everybody else should be as well um everybody else just follows in it kind of gets a montage of everybody coming in do some notable ones darrell ronnie naya they all look good they all look good coming in the house everybody looks good but all the black people they all look <laughs> they all look good like there's no bad black in this house like everybody looks good um one notable thing i did notice too sylvia and kayla they walk in together and sylvia goes she don't know why she's there and i'm like good thing you said it because i'm wondering the same thing too like kayla i can deal with kayla coming back but sylvia is boring like she ain't do nothing and i feel like she's super overhyped as a competitor yes she can she can win but like you competing against people 
majority of the people that you're competing against are well seasoned and have not played these games in a long, long time. And we'll get into what I'm saying by that. But it's just like, I feel like she's overrated. I don't feel like she's that great of a competitor. And she's boring as fuck. Like, she's not entertaining to me. But that's neither here nor there. Um, we get Wes, Nehemiah, and Melinda. They all come together. And it's it's really cool to see them all arrive together. Because they were on the same real world season. Real world Austin. I want to say that was like 2004, 2005. I was 10 years old. Like, that a while ago and I think this might be the first season that all three of them have done together in a while if they have I'm trying to think Melinda's last season was seasons maybe battle of the seasons and I don't think Nehemiah was on there and I think the last season that Melinda and Wet no I don't know this might be their first season back together in a long time or at least for the first time ever but Wes is excited to see them, excited to be there with them, because that's like his crew. He know he got them to have his back. And Wes said he wants to come in here and squash all the good vibes that the first two seasons of the show had and turn it up. And I'm excited. Like I said, you gotta have a Wes on you have to have a Wes character on your shows to keep it keep it sparked up. Like he's gonna do stuff just to get people riled up, bring the drama, and that's what Wes is gonna do. And everybody else was noticing that and they were noting that, like, here comes Wes from Uncle Stillskin, like the one that's the one that's going to cause some mess in the house. And that's exactly what he's there for. And I'm excited for it. Um, next, we get Yes, John A, and MJ. They all show up. They are all the champs of season one and two of All-Stars. So everybody else is looking and is like, yep. They all arrived together. Here's the champs. Sylvia is the only one who noticed that. Or well, not noticed that. But she's the only one who <laughs> notably said that she was nervous. Nobody else seemed too nervous to see them. But she was interesting. Um, another not notable moment, Kellyanne and Tyler. They were really excited to see each other because they have not ever met each other, which is interesting to me because they've done a show a lot of times in the past, but it's just interesting to think some of these people have not crossed paths even though they are OGs. So it's really interesting to see the two of them playing together. They're both excited to see each other. They're both excited to kind of play together. So that's going to be exciting to see. Also... Um, we got Cynthia. Cynthia and Ronnie are sitting there talking with Tina. It's been 18 years since Cynthia's been on TV. And she was a part of the first challenge ever. And that was in 1998. 1998, I was three years old? I was born in 95? Yeah, I was three years old when that show was on. And that's when she was on the show and she won that challenge. And I think that was her only challenge season that she did. So she won a challenge and now she's back. It's funny, uh... As they're showing uh, Cynthia talking with uh, Ronnie and Tina, you got Latarian and Nehemiah sitting there eyeing them, talking about how good she looked. She got a boyfriend and whatnot. And it's funny because they just hitting on her like from afar. Then we get Naya and Jordan. Naya, you already know that's my girl, so I'm excited to see her back. She seems very, very chill. Naya's a chill person, but she just seems, you can tell she's grown up a lot. You can tell she's matured a lot. Um, a lot of people probably are expecting her to be the same Nia she was back in the day. And if they don't get that, I feel like a lot of people are going to be disappointed. But I'm like, why would you get disappointed at the fact that she's not... I think she was 24 back then. She's 33 now. Why would she be on TV fighting and stuff? And, and when I'm saying fighting, you can have arguments and whatnot. But I don't see... She ain't going to be on here doing what she used to be doing. And you can't get mad at her for not doing that. Because she's grown now and she's got a career, like a real established career. Why would she get on here and make an ass out of herself for some coins, some little coins? Because she's not trying to do this like, Naya's not trying to do this regularly like the rest of them on the main show be doing. This is not her career. So, of course, she's going to come on the show and keep it all together and try her best to not have to come out of her face. But um, it's just exciting to see her back. She looks good as always. Her and Jordan, they kind of have like their little together moment where they're in the camera talking to uh, talking to the camera in their interviews. And that's, it's interesting because with them two, you don't know what their relationship is. You know that they're, they're really tight now. Um, they're in a good space. But the music that was playing is playing like this little <laughs> romantic like music whenever they were in their um, interview together. Which is kind of leading you to believe that they might be in a relationship. Neither one of them have confirmed or denied that. It's rumors that they were hooking up on the season. We're going to probably see that. But I don't know what their their stamp on their relationship is. But I guess we'll see what that is. 
Jordan's trying to redeem himself, as is Nia. Um, the jury's out for Jordan. I'm not a fan of him, but that's not my business. Nia is a fan of him, so hopefully he just does not do her dirty, and I won't be mad if he doesn't. But that was that little scene, and then we also move on to the next day. The next day, they get to the challenge. TJ lets him know that every single person there on this season is, is there because they all have at least qualified to make a final in the past. So this is the first season where we have all finalists. And it's funny because everybody's going to say, Naya wasn't a finalist. She wasn't. But <laughs> Naya basically would have made that final had she not have done what she done and got kicked off the show. We all know that. There was no way Nani was beating her in that last elimination. So yeah, TJ's right for calling her a finalist because she would have made the final. Um, but they're basically playing for their share of $500,000. The top male and the top female will split that. Um, so it is an individual season and an individual for men and women. Um, and the game that they're playing today, the challenge is called Tunnel Vision. And the challenge basically is it's a wall of vines and uh, there's a pattern on the other side of the wall. So what they have to do is just memorize that pattern on the back side of the wall and come and bring it and put it on the puzzle and be the first one to do it. As long as you're not the last one, you won't go into elimination. Jimmy decides that she wants to talk about how she's very great at mem memorizing Everybody else's business, but when it comes to anything else, she's hard at doing that. That's not something to gloat about. <laughs> at least not for me. Like she just if you don't know, I don't like Jimmy. I ain't never liked her, so <laughs> it's all good over here. But let's go. We're about to see what the challenge is. So we get to the challenge, and I'm just gonna breeze on through this because it was just I mean it's not much to really talk about because you can't really see who was doing the best and who was doing the worst, but here are the placements for the men and the women. First place to finish was Wes. Second was Yes. Wes and Yes. <laughs> Third was MJ. So, so far you already see two, the two, two of the uh, top three finishers for the men were previous champions of All-Stars, which is Yes and MJ. Fourth was Darrell. Fifth was Nehemiah. Sixth was Jordan. Seventh was Derek. Eighth was Latarian. Ninth was Brad, 10th was Mark, 11th was Cyrus, I mean was Tyler, and Cyrus is the one who was going in. Cyrus was last. Not too happy about that because I'm a big Cyrus fan. The one that I wanted to go in would have been Derek. Because <laughs> y'all know I can't stand him either. But for the women, Sylvia won. So she won the first one. Uh, so Sylvia's in first place, Kellyanne was second. Third place was Veronica, fourth was Melinda, fifth was Kayla, sixth was Jimmy, seventh was John A, eighth was Ronnie, nine was Naya, tenth was Kendall, eleventh was Tina, and Cynthia was going in. For this one, Jimmy or Sylvia would have been perfect for me. I would have loved for one of those two to go in, but that's not what happened. So, uh, TJ ends up telling them that the top three men and women form the authority, which is kind of like a tribunal, um, except there's no begging and pleading to their face to not go in. So basically, um, they're tasked to nominate a man and a woman to go in against the two losers for the men and the women. So Tina's excited because Veronica's in there. So the top three is Wes, Yes, MJ, Sylvia, Kellyanne, and Veronica. So those six will be making the choice. And like I said, Tina's excited because Veronica's in there and she feels like Veronica will be able to sway any kind of target that might be put on Tina's back. Because if you do know, you know Veronica is very, very smart with her words. She's the type that if she wants to put a target on somebody's back, she can do that. If she wants to get a target off somebody's back, she can do that. If you want me to give you an example, think back to her on the ruins. When she was about to go in and she worked her magic to where they all voted to get her in and then they flipped the vote to where she ended up escaping that elimination. And I think it was Kellyanne that went in. And then... For an instance where she basically took charge, she ended up getting Leroy in off of them burn votes. So Veronica's not nobody to play with when it comes to politicians and politi politically playing your game. She's one of the goats at that. So uh, we get back to the house and Nehemiah and Mark are pretty much wondering what's going to happen. Like, Especially with Wes being in there, um, they're wondering if they're going to go the easy first week route of just going by the two that finished close to the end. Or if they're going to make a big move. And they feel like, yes, we'll probably play it cool. And they feel like Wes will probably go hard and gun for Jordan. Because essentially, Jordan is the strongest threat of the men. So they're they're fully expecting to possibly see that happen. They don't know for sure, but we're about to see. Um, yes, yes, I'm a jo 
Yes, I enjoyed him on season one, and I'm really rooting for him this season. I like what I'm seeing so far of him. He's getting a lot of screen time. You can tell they're kind of building up a, a rivalry with him and Wes, so I keep stuttering, getting ready to say each name because Wes and Yes is so close, but I'm just excited to see what that's going to do. I hope Yes comes out victorious if it does come down to them two knocking heads, so that's a little sidebar for me. Um, but then they ended up having a jungle themed party. It was just a little fun moment. It just kind of gave you back old school vibes. They don't even do that on the challenge anymore. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Everybody looked good. Tyler came down there in his like drag type outfit. It was just a fun little scene. Everybody was having fun. Um, so then they start, as they're having the party, they still go around and pretty much start picking the brains of the people in the authority as well as the two eliminated, not eliminated, the two uh, losers that are going into the elimination. So Sylvia's talking to uh, Cynthia and basically asks Cynthia who she wants to go in. And Cynthia's like, I'm not singling nobody out. Like, and Cynthia's mind that's some punk shit to be singling somebody out. Just put who you want to put in there and I'll go in there against them. And I agree with Sylvia. That's the, I mean, not Sylvia, Cynthia. That's the type of gameplay that I would. I'm not begging and pleading nobody to not put me in. And then I'm not begging and pleading somebody to put me in against somebody else. If you put me in, you put me in. You put me in there against somebody good because I want to beat somebody good. I don't want to just beat somebody easy. So that's kind of how Cynthia is thinking and Ronnie is also noticing that nobody's really coming to her and talking about any type of game. So she's nervous and worried because when nobody's talking to you about game, you're not on anybody's radar in terms of somebody that you want to work with. So you very well could be the type of person that they would throw in. So hopefully they're not coming for Ronnie. I like Ronnie. Um, Tyler ends up telling Veronica, like, if you come to play All-Stars, I want you to come in here and you better play. Like, play hard. Don't go in here and make little punk ass moves and not not vote for people because you're scared of making waves and i agree like if you go in here playing all stars get in here and play don't make no punk moves and he was basically saying that to veronica when she was basically asking like what what type of idea does he think that she should probably go with because veronica's saying like with cynthia and cyrus in there she's not confident that anybody in there could possibly lose to them because those two are good and <laughs> there's a lot of good people here so it's kind of it's, it's a toss up to see who's going to win whatever elimination. So I don't think on paper anybody on here is weak. So it could go either way with any matchup that you put in there. So that's kind of where she's at. So then we ended up getting to um, Jordan, Nia, and Tyler outside the next day. And Nia's worried because she feels like Jordan doesn't have too many allies in the game. So she feels like that's making him pretty vulnerable. And he's feeling the same way. He feels like Wes is probably going to target him. So he's fully expecting that. So we'll see if that actually follows through. But um, we get to the authority. So they're basically talking, and Yes is saying that he wants to run against the people that are the best in the final, whereas MJ was saying he don't want people like Jordan in the final because he wants it easier for him, whereas Yes is saying, like, I want to I wanna compete against the best. And like I said, I would want to compete against the best too. I want to, if you're going to win, I want to win saying I beat the best. And if I lose, I'm okay with saying I lost to the best. <laughs> and I, so I'm right there with Yes. Uh, but Sylvia mentions that her and uh, Veronica both have their two that they want to protect, which would be for Sylvia would be Kayla and for Veronica would be Tina. And MJ ended up mention, mentioning Jordan as a target, an option to put up. Wes said that he wouldn't completely object to that, but he's like, is that the right move to make right now? Because essentially Jordan is going to beat Cyrus. And it's like, so who would you put Jordan up against? And it, really I think the person that you would probably put Jordan up against to possibly lose to would be a Wes, would be Darrell, would be a Brad, would be I hate him, but if it's something physical, Derek. So in terms of that, yeah, like in terms of that, you got Cyrus in there, who knows what it possibly could be. Old school Cyrus probably would have put up a fight, but Cyrus is on the older spectrum. Even though he looked good, he's nice and firm and fit, but Cyrus is older. <laughs> I was about to say old, but he ain't that old. But in challenge games and playing against Jordan, he's old. But Jordan might be 30 something years old. So, and he's still kind of in his prime in terms of like his body. So, they're trying to play it safe. And they're just basically saying logistically, the best move is to go for the bottom two. Tina is <laughs> in that bottom two. Veronica don't want to say her name. Veronica don't want her in there. But Veronica's like, why would I put up a fight against. Something that seems like it's going to be a majority. And Tina very likely can beat Cynthia. So she's not really putting up a fight. So that's what ends up happening. Tina and Tyler are going in against Cynthia. 
and Cyrus. And when it comes to this matchup, I see Tina winning and I see Cyrus winning. So let's see. Right. So they all get back to, um, I was about to say get back to the house, but they were outside. So they go back in the house and pull each other to the side. Veronica pulls Tina to the side and said basically nobody wanted her or Tyler to go in, but that's what's happening. Tina was immediately like, no, I don't want to talk about it right now. We can talk about it whenever the elimination's over. AKA, you can tell Tina's not trying to get riled up. She's trying to save all that for the elimination. But Tina did say that <laughs> if push comes to shove in the future and Veronica's name is up on the table, she'll vote for her because Veronica took the first jab and put her in, so she has no problem doing the same for her. So that's going to be interesting because the two of them, I never saw them going against each other. They haven't in the past, and that's why I wasn't expecting it this time. But episode one, we got <laughs> some unexpected stuff happening, so that's going to be interesting to watch out for in the future. So MJ and Kellyanne pull Tyler to the side and tell him Tyler's not happy, obviously, because the two of them, MJ and Kellyanne, are in his room with him, and they're friends with him. So he feels like he's been kind of abandoned by his two roommates. But we get to the elimination. The elimination arena looks nice. Um, again, it's just shot really nicely. Like, I love the way they're filming the show this season. Um, but the elimination is called Crawl Brawl. So it's like a hall brawl, but, like, they're crawling. And they start on opposite sides of a steel tunnel. They have to grab a sandbag and drag all the bags to the bell. And whoever does it the fastest wins. First thing I noticed, I wouldn't be able to do this because the, tu the tunnel is so small and so narrow and they have to crawl between it and they're passing each other. And then there's sand in the middle so that they dig the sand down just to get able to get through to the other side. I would not be able to do it. I'm claustrophobic. Like, I would not be able to do that, but... Tina and uh, Tina and Cynthia go first. They're both doing pretty well um, the entire time, but Tina ends up winning. Tina's not happy about. I mean, she's happy about winning, but she's not happy about Cynthia going home because they're tight. Um, Cynthia was like, I mean, she she wins some, she loses some. She was happy with how she performed. She wished she would have won, but she was happy with how she performed and she enjoyed the experience. I'm sad about that because I wanted to see more of Cynthia. So hopefully, she comes back in the future. Um, and then we get Cyrus and uh, Tyler. They end up going at it. And Cyrus wipes the floor with Tyler. <laughs> um, Tyler's just big. And you can tell he hasn't worked out like that in a while, whereas Cyrus is in great shape for 50 years old. And Cyrus just did that. Like, he killed it. And uh, he beat Tyler. So Cyrus and Tina end up getting a star. And this is where uh, TJ lets them know that Every time you go into the elimination and you send somebody home, you get a star. He didn't tell us too much about what the stars would mean, but it does have power. And he said the more stars you get, the more power you you get. Basically, the more powerful you become. So that's going to play <laughs> into the future. And we're going to see if that's going to make people want to go down there and get eliminations even more. Whereas if it was me, truthfully, like I said, I don't care. I would go in elimination anytime. I'm the type that I, could see my, I can't see myself fighting to not go in. If anything, it's fun. Like, I feel like you get to go in there and earn your stripes. Yeah, you don't want to go home, but if you go on elimination, you go on elimination. You And in, in this instance, you end up getting stars, which could turn into power. So I'm excited to see what episode two is about to do. We're about to get into that now. So let's go. We get to episode two, uh, just to run through it real quick. I look like I <laughs> got no clothes on. <laughs> I got my workout shorts on. But... <laughs> Tina, she uh, basically, this is the next day, and everybody's about to pool and whatnot. Tina's saying she feel like every girl's going to leave her alone after that elimination. That's what she's hoping happens, but as we knew, Veronica and Melinda are like her closest girls in the house, so she just wants those two and her to just skate on by and not have to worry about getting uh, put in eliminations again. But Melinda was basically talking to uh, John A and MJ, um about that sabotage stuff and she's saying like she don't think it's a good thing because say you end up sabotaging somebody they don't end up going home then they come back the next week and then there's a target on your back and then not only that you're showing your cards because you're showing who you're working with and who you're not working with and she's right about that um <clears throat> kayla then asked wes um who's sitting downstairs with veronica sylvia and i think jimmy was in there too basically asking who they're gonna throw their sabotage on and wes was like i was gonna ask sylvia Sylvia is saying she, it's a toss-up between Kellyanne and Kendall. She said because Kendall is quiet, and she said Kellyanne 
is kind of similar to her and incomparable um, in terms of how they compete in their size. And I'm like, in terms of size, I don't see where that's a comparison, but okay. <laughs> so then we get another scene. Uh, and this scene is with Mark talking to his mom <clears throat> through FaceTime. His mom is battling cancer. She's been battling cancer for a while. And that's like kind of like the reason why he comes back and does these shows because she loves watching him compete. Even though he's a lot older than once he was, than when he once was on the show, um, she still enjoys watching him compete. So he's doing that for her. That was a nice little moment. <clears throat> then we find out Melinda is injured. She's got a wrapped up ankle. She ended up injuring herself last season during the final. I remember when she fell a couple times. So apparently she injured herself then. But that's just a little bit of what happened before the challenge. We get to the challenge. It's called out of reach, so it's a heights over water type of challenge. Um, so what they have to do is solve a puzzle. So they're locked. Uh, their keys are locked in a box up on the top of the water. Now they have a swing. It's like they have a swing in midair, so they have to swing themselves to that box. The key is attached to like this big old little. I don't know what you call it, like a ball or whatnot. So they have to kick the box where the key is in, and the key will fall out into the water and that'll drop them and then they have to swim, get the key, swim, get back up there, unlock the box that has the puzzle pieces and then assemble the puzzle and whoever does it fastest wins and whoever does it the slowest loses. So, <clears throat> the first heat, we have um, Derek, L uh, Letarian, I'm gonna say LT, Wes, Jordan, Mark, Nehemiah. So Derek ends up hitting the key first, Jordan was next. Jordan was, oh, I forgot to say this too. Um, <coughs> Wes decided to sabotage Jordan, which is no shock. I mean, anybody would because Jordan is the biggest threat in the game. So, of course, you want to sabotage him. And Sylvia's punk ass, she decides, it's funny because TJ asked her first who she wanted to sabotage. And she says, she, can Wes go first? Can Wes go first? I don't want to do it. It's like, why are you here? That's why I'm saying, like, in terms of the All-Stars, she don't need to be on here. Because she said in the first episode, when, uh, when she was asking Cynthia who she wanted to go against, I want somebody to tell me what to do. Then, bitch, why are you here? <laughs> like, go home. You're not an All-Star. All-Stars get on here and do what they want to do. But she ended up choosing uh, Kelly M. So they all get a one-minute uh, penalty whenever they have been sabotaged. So, like I said, Derek was first to drop his. Then it was Jordan. And Nehemiah followed after him, Mark also, and then Latarian and Wes were up there so long they ended up getting dropped. So they got dropped, and it's funny because as Wes <laughs> is still up there, he done sabotaged Jordan. Jordan done got down there and completed his puzzle first while Wes was still up in the swing. So <laughs> it looked funny. It was very funny. Uh, but Jordan finished that first, and Nehemiah was next, then it was Mark, then it was Derek. Then it was Wes and Latarian. He was dead last. So the second heat, which is the first heat for the women, was Kellyanne, Jimmy, Naya, Melinda, John A, and Sylvia. John A was the first to kick hers, and she got down. Um, Kellyanne was second to kick hers, but since she had that penalty, she had to wait a minute. So um, everybody else was still sitting up there. Sylvia, Naya, Melinda, Jimmy, they were still up there, so they ended up getting dropped. So it's funny because Kellyanne was down there for a good minute. John A finished hers first. Sylvia then finishes hers. Naya right after her. Then Melinda, then Jimmy and Kellyanne are the last two. Kellyanne's losing her mind saying, just tell me how to cheat just, just so I can get it over with. Just <laughs> help me get it over with. Jimmy is just all fucked up and she ain't getting the puzzle done either. But Jimmy ends up beating Kellyanne. Kellyanne's pissed off because had she not been sabotaged, she possibly could have won, but Kellyanne's not good with puzzles. She said it there, and she ended up being dead last. So that's interesting. So that sabotage worked for her, but it didn't work for Jordan. So that's funny how you see how it can or cannot uh, end up hindering a possible challenger. But the next heat was Brad, Yes, Cyrus, MJ, and Darrell. MJ kicked his first, Cyrus was second, Yes was third, Brad was fourth. Darrell sat his black ass up there and waited. He said he is afraid of heights. He was not trying to exert any energy trying to do that because I guess he kept swinging back and forth to the point where he was cutting his hands. 
So he like, I'm dead last, so why the fuck I'm gonna keep swinging and shit? I'm like, I would've done the same thing. If I'm not coming down, then I'm just gonna sit up here too until you drop me. Cause like he said, like that's, that's exerting more energy that he possibly could be using in a potential elimination if he ends up going in there. But um, yes, finished first. Yes is a beast. I'm rooting for yes. Brad was next, MJ was next, Cyrus was after him, and Darrell was last. Darrell finished the puzzle, but he was last. And then we got the last heat, which is the second heat for the women. Veronica, Kayla, Tina, Ronnie, and Kendall. Tina, <laughs> Tina ended up DQing, because it's funny too. Well, the reason why I'm laughing is because she said in her confession before she went out there that she might end up swinging too hard and completely forget the purpose of why she's up there. Because I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, I probably would do that too. Like, get up there and be trying to swing so hard that you completely forget why you're even swinging. And she said she thought she was going to end up doing that and then end up forgetting. She gets up there and starts swinging. <laughs> and Tina swings so hard to the point where she about knocked herself out of the swing. And then she starts kind of like leaning forward trying to catch herself and then she gets stuck. <laughs> and everybody down there is laughing because it's so funny because she looks like she is stuck up in the air. And then she ends up dropping. She's the first one to drop. Not by choice and not by um, just a time restraint. She dropped because she could not hold herself back up there. So Tina is the first one to really DQ. So she is a, she's the one girl that's going in. Um, but yeah, uh, who else? Kendall, she uh, finished first. Then it was Kayla, then it was Ronnie, and then it was Veronica. So Tina and Latarian are going into the elimination. Yes, and Kendall end up winning the elimination. So they get to sabotage somebody next week. Um, but making up the, uh, I wanted to say tribunal, but making up the authority is, yes, Kendall, Jordan, John A., Brad, and Kayla. So I'm excited to see what is about to happen and who they're going to put in against Tina and Latarian. Let's see. So they get to the house. Um, this is later on that night. So they all go out. They actually go out from the house. So they get to, like, it looks like they were at a club or whatnot, or at least a lounge. Um, so everybody's just mingling and talking and whatnot. And Tina takes it, her opportunity to go talk to John A., since John A.'s in power. John A asked her if she could choose anybody to go against, who would she choose? And she's like, I mean, I can't really say any names, but the ones that I don't want to go in are the ones that I'm cool with. Like she said she don't want no friends to go in, and if she does have any friends going in against her, she's going to take it as a dirty move. And basically told John A, don't fuck with me. <laughs> like, if you put one of my friends in, then I'm going to take that as a threat, and I'm going to take that as you coming for me, and I'm going to come for you, because you're going to be on my bad side now. And John A was like, bitch, what? <laughs> like, who are you talking to? And that's why I'm happy with John A. John A's, but she always been that way, kind of like, yes, Zach used to be, he treated her so nasty, but John A always been with the shits. So it's, it's very funny to see this. This is kind of like a teaser for John A versus Tina, because I can already see this happening. Um, but Latarium basically was saying he didn't want any of his boys to go in, AKA Nehemiah, he didn't want Nehemiah, he didn't want Darrell, um, he didn't want Cyrus. None of the niggas. He ain't want none of the niggas in there. And I didn't want none of them in there either. So, um, but Jimmy and Kayla, they go and talk to John A. And basically, John A. tells them what happened. And they're just like, nah, fuck Tina. Like, do what you want to do. Like, Tina is not here to tell you how to run your game. Like, play your game and get them out. Because if, if Push came to show, she'd do the same shit to you. So, why would you owe her any loyalty when you don't know her like that? And John A. was like, yeah. And like, she gonna throw in who she want to throw in. So then we get to um, the authority having their conversation. Kendall immediately says she wants to respect the wishes of the two eliminated, or the two losers going into the elimination, which is to not have their friends go in. Kayla immediately pipes in and is like, nah, that's, that's stupid. Like, we don't have to do what they want us to do. Like, we're the ones in the authority. Which, um, Kayla, and Kayla was kind of spearheading this whole um, conversation and the whole deliberation. What she was saying, Kayla was kind of schooling, and it's crazy. This is the first time I've seen Kayla in a different light in the game. It's like, to me, it seems like she finally has a grasp on how to really play the game strategically. And she's like, kind of like, okay, well, let's let's go around and just say who we don't want to go in. Basically, she's hoping that somebody shows their cards so she'll know who they're aligned with, so she'll know to make that mental note in the future. Okay, this person's aligned with this person, so I'm going to get this person out so that you won't have that person. Kayla's playing a smart game. But Kayla, and this is why I say she's playing smart, she says Sylvia. Granted, we don't know if Sylvia is the only person that Kayla's close to in the game, but if she's close to other people, she didn't let them know that. Because she said, Sylvia, I don't want Sylvia to go in. Yes, said that he didn't want Jimmy to go in because him and Jimmy got close on season one. 
Uh, Kendall said she didn't want the row to go in. We obviously know that's not going to happen. They're closed from semester to see. Road rules. Jordan said he didn't want Naya to go in. Thank you. You better pack Naya all day long. John A said she didn't want MJ to go in. <laughs> you catch it my drift. I've, I've heard some, some rumors and some rumblings about them too, but that's that's who she don't want to go in. And Brad, I don't think Brad said anybody, so that's interesting. Um, but yeah, so then they kind of get up to the point where Kayla's basically saying like, I want to bring this up to let y'all know. I don't know if y'all have peeped it, but Wes and Nehemiah and Melinda, they're all from the same real world season. They came in together. You already know they got an alliance. Keep that in mind. We might need to split that team up. Basically saying throw in Melinda and throw in either Wes and Nehemiah. Yes, takes that as an opportunity to go ahead and jump on Wes. Like, go ahead and put Wes in there. And it's funny because Mark was on the table too and Brad didn't want Mark to go in. Kayla was like, nah, we can put him in. We can put Mark in. And they all jumped on it. So they all voted. Everybody said Mark except for Brad. And I think Kendall didn't say it. Everybody said Melinda, except for Kendall and Brad. Nope, Brad said it, but Kendall didn't. So yeah, Kendall, uh, not Kendall, Melinda and Mark are going in against Tina and Latarian. Latarian, in a way, kind of got not what he wanted, but his voice ain't in there, but Tina got one of her two closest allies going in against her. She's pissed <laughs> because Johnna goes and tells her, she gets up out of her bed like, bitch, what? And John A tells her, it's just like, John A's a very nice girl, but she got some teeth in her mouth. Okay, like, she, she ain't here playing. So, like I said, I see that happening in the future. So, we're about to see what's about to happen with this elimination. So, I'm excited to see who's going to win. So, we get to the arena, and uh, they bring everybody down. Tina goes down first. Um, and then, Nehemiah brings Melinda down. Melinda can't even walk down the stairs. Long story short, Melinda cannot compete. She's not competing, so basically she's forfeiting, she's quitting. Uh, Tina, it's funny too, because TJ kind of did a little fake out where he said, Tina, now since Melinda can't compete, you can turn around and choose whoever the fuck you want to go against. <laughs> and everybody up there's like, oh shit. And I was like, oh shit, like she can really choose anybody? Does that mean she could choose anybody that was safe? But no, he was just playing with her. But <laughs> Tina didn't have to go against nobody. Um, but the elimination was kind of like the same elimination that happened with Naya and Car Maria, with like harness thing, and they have to go at different, uh, go in different directions and pull each other, try to pull each other, but trying to get to the veil first. Um, it came to like a little stalemate at one point. Materian and uh, Mark were just like dug in deep, and they were just sticking there, and then everybody's like, why don't you try something different? Like, John A and MJ was like, why don't Latarian just try and get up and spring? And it's like, you don't have nothing to lose at this point because who's to say Mark's not paying attention and you get up and you start running and start turning it all the way, turning it all the way around and end up getting to your bell first. But as he does that, he gets up to try and sprint. Mark notices and Mark ends up winning. So Mark wins the elimination, Mark and Tina are safe. Going into next week, uh, Tina has two stars now. Mark has a star. Well, actually, Tina has three stars now, I think. Because she got her star, and then she got the one from Cynthia, and now she got Melinda's star. And then Mark has his star, and now Materian's star. So we're going to see what that does with their power. I hope they start to tell what that is soon. But that is the first two episodes. <laughs> I just knocked all that out in two hours, maybe. Let me know what y'all think about the episodes. Let me know what y'all think about the premiere, who you're rooting for, what y'all think about the alliances, what y'all think about what's just going on in the game itself. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the rest of the season's gonna look like. Um, and also like the CBS challenge, I know that just finished. I don't know if I'm gonna review it, but I might. I know that's coming soon, so we'll see. But yeah, like I said, thank you again for watching the video. Thumbs up the video, drop a comment. Share it, subscribe, follow me on social media, all that's right here. And yeah, I'll see y'all next week. I don't know exactly when the next one will come out. Hopefully it'll come out sooner because I'm not reviewing two episodes at once. But yeah, I'll see y'all next week. Peace.